back at the clinic and we have Professor Hany Atib and our company today. Uh, he is the president of the, Scottish, of the Scottish Cardiac Society and vice president of the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons at Glasgow. Welcome, doctor. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, the left main coronary artery disease. I want the doctor to uh, get benefit from your experience uh, as a professor. Uh, from how to diagnose and how to uh, follow a treatment plan for the patient to follow in order to make the best out of uh, the situation and their uh, disease. Sure. Well, in fact, the evidence for management of left main stem has been evolving for a number of years, but perhaps over the last five years or so, our understanding how to manage this serious and at times life-threatening condition has grown significantly. You know. Traditionally, you know, 20 years ago or so, the standard treatment for left main stem disease, significant left main stem disease, was open heart surgery, which remained an option for a significant yes. number of patients. However, emerging techniques uh, uh, with angioplasty and intracoronary stenting proved to be effective and efficient with equally good results like surgical intervention. And therefore, it is very important that we identify the patient who will benefit best from surgical and the patient who are suitable and the care of them will not be compromised by interven interventional approach. Generally speaking, what determines it whether surgical or interventional is complex. It includes the patient profile. So, for example, very elderly patients, and when I say elderly, perhaps above 80 years of age, uh, those patients who have comorbid conditions, including advanced lung disease, advanced kidney disease, they may be better considered for percutaneous option because the surgical risk will be prohibitively high. On the other hand, complex lesions of left main, particularly with severe calcified triple vessel disease and where you have also associated with that chronic total occlusion and in patients who are diabetics with a longer life expectancy, we probably would say that bypass surgery is a preferred option, especially those we have a degree of left ventricular impairment. So the guidelines are very clear that there is equivalence between surgical and interventional stent deployment in a cohort of patients, but also there is clear-cut indication that surgery is superior in the setting that I said to you, the complexity of the lesion, the uh, diabetic patients particularly would probably benefit more from surgical. On the other hand, simple lesions will in the isolated left main stem, left main stem with single vessel disease, preserved left ventricular function, all of these people in the experienced hands with the experienced team in a facility that is used to dealing with left main stem could be done. But left main stem is done interventionally in addition to the expertise. It is mandatory that you also have access to intravascular imaging and intravascular uh, fractional flow reserve and other physiological measurements. And uh, what do you advise doctors who deal with patients uh, with the left main artery disease uh, to, be to best educate themselves about the, uh, this disease and to in order to be better to perform, yeah. uh, especially young doctors? I think my advice here would be early recognition. You know, these people, you know, have sometimes have very advanced symptoms. You know, they have very, you know, normally they have very large area of myocardium at risk and ischemia is severe. Ischemia is not always presented as frequent symptoms of angina, but when it's presented as progressive angina, early investigation and early intervention is highly recommended. Thank you so much, Doctor, for your valuable information and your advices. And uh, we are very pleased to have you. Uh, and we hope to see you next year in our conference. Hopefully. I'm delighted to be here with you today. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much.